Quick shout out from our sponsor, Sheer ID. Are you trying to boost conversions to your Shopify store? Need to drive more customer loyalty? Get results fast by offering exclusive discounts to consumer communities with Sheer ID. Sheer ID helps verify students, teachers, military, first responders, and so much more of these groups. With Sheer ID, you'll get a verified match in seconds. You can spit out an exclusive discount for customers on the spot. Try speaking directly to a new customer segment with this verifiable identity without adding friction to the shopping experience. Continue to drive incremental revenue in the next 90 days post-purchase with more tailored messaging for your email and SMS campaigns. I personally tested ShareID to see just how easy it was to get it set up, and I was pretty much ready to go in under 15 minutes. The onboarding was simple enough for me to follow as a non-technical person. Go to sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. Once again, that's sheerid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. Hello and welcome to e-commerce uncovered. I'm your host, Matt Lady. Each and every week I get to talk with and learn from enthusiastic guests, freelancers, agency folks, in-house marketers, and founders, all in an effort to help you bootstrap your D2C brand profitably. We got two episodes a week, which will have you staying up to date on the ever-changing industry and learning fundamental concepts and tactics to apply to your brand. Enjoy the show. Today's episode is with someone 13 years of experience as a performance creative consultant from HG Performance Creative, a full stack creative strategy agency for D2C brands. Their team helps brands generate better ROI on their paid ads with targeted research, creative analysis, and they help them develop a psychology-based creative strategy specifically for their brand and customers. Please welcome Sarah Levenger. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Hello. I'm so excited to chat with you today. This is going to be super fun. Um, any anytime I get to like chat with Matt, it's just a good day. Oh, just a good day. I feel the same way. It's a good day. <laughs> it's morning over here, starting the day off right. Yeah. So. Uh, so, Sarah, right before we got on, you told me something that kind of threw me off. Uh, <laughs> per so the use. <laughs> so let's just start there, and then we'll kind of, that'll give us a good foundation. So iOS 14.5 last year broke advertising for a little while. We can't just rely on Facebook to do everything for us. A year, it's a year, almost a year and a half later, you're, and you said something like media buying is dead, media buying <laughs> is dying. Sarah, talk to me about that. <laughs> I always like to break people's brains right out of the gate just because it's more fun for me. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I have had this conversation now with quite a few people, especially in Q4. People get really, really intense on Q4. Um, and as we talked about before we started recording, sometimes I think people forget that Black Friday happens on the same day every year. Um, and they tend to get a little upset, I've noticed, at this time of the year. This year in particular, I've noticed it's even more so because we don't have any of the capabilities that we used to have in Facebook. Uh, and geez, the majority, I think, of people that we work with at the agency side, on the creative strategy side, are all on Facebook. So like, it's a very, very big topic. Lots of people ask me, what do you think about the creative state of things? And where do you think we should be focusing the majority of our efforts? Because we are noticing that remarketing isn't working. We don't have any more top, middle, bottom of funnel. We basically have nothing. We have broad targeting across the board. And that's the only thing that was working for us. This is the reason why I say <clears throat> very tentatively, I think that media buying is probably dead. <laughs> And when I say dead, I don't mean that we don't need media buyers anymore. I mean more that like now is the time to basically shift your entire strategy. It used to be very targeted in the platform where we needed very skilled people to build out different pieces of the funnel and have creative that basically like collaborated with each funnel set. Now we have one funnel, one, just one stage, and that's broad. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like Facebook, just send this to anybody you think would like this type of a thing. And the only thing we have full control over is the creative itself. Oh, yeah. So media buying in its uh, glory days, it's hate. It's uh, yeah. when you can put up any ad, run any hate spent behind it. That's been long gone. That's yep. been since 2017-ish. But 
the, the next phase of hack and slash ad account structure, CBO versus ABO this, cost cap, yes. big cap that, um, duplicate the ad set, re, re, use post, I, all this stuff is, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, will, I will ultimately agree with you, is slowly uh, yep. dying. And yep. especially uh, as I've pivoted from not just being a media buyer and now being a head of growth at a brand, <laughs> Uh, yes. It's all part parts of the puzzle, the website, the creative, the landing page, the experience, the emails. I get to control all of that now. And I think that's, that's always been important. That's always, yes. But I was yeah. never able to kind of touch and control that in the yeah. past. So yeah. I'm with you on there. So that kind of sets up this, the rest of the conversation is we're both <laughs> former, former like media buyers and saying like media buying is dying and it's transitioning. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Because of the iOS changes, because of the audience targeting and the settings and all this stuff. So how, where do we get started on how to make that transition like to yes. this new creative focus? <laughs> and you, you love, uh, you've really exploded across the internet, but especially on Twitter <laughs> uh, from like a year ago or a year and a half ago when we first kind of met. You had a couple hundred followers and then now you're over 5,000, like, and talking about sci uh, like so consumer psychology, psychology-based creative. So mm. let's get the basics out there and then we can build off that. Yes. So you and I worked together a year ago and it was really funny because when I first came in, I was like super green to e-com. I had been doing lead gen Facebook for quite a while, but I hadn't ever done e-com. So it was like a totally different beast. And so I was learning a lot from you, honestly. Uh on like how to properly set up Facebook, you know, just the entire ecosystem itself. And I think one of the things that both you and I noticed very quickly was I was much stronger at creative <laughs> than I was at media buying in general, which is fine. I can own up to that. I was a decent media buyer. I was not a great media buyer uh, by any means, but I was very, very skilled at creative um, right out the gate. And I think that stemmed from the fact that I had had almost 10, 11 years worth of psychology knowledge, which again, was just something I was interested in. It wasn't really even like a part of my career. I didn't go to school for it. I just liked it. And so I read a lot of library books and I went into all kinds of different topics, not just on like marketing and psychology, but neuroscience, behavior science, consumer behavior, economics, like just everything I could get my hands on that had anything to do with how people purchase things and how they make decisions. So I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> that I had this knowledge <laughs> because I didn't think anybody would like it. I honestly thought that I was just nerdy and weird, but I was applying it to the creative that you and I were working on, which was funny because one of the first brands that we worked on was a lash brand. Mm -hmm. And I remember some of the ads that we produced together. And I was like, well, this is something that I found in the ad comment, the actual reviews. And I'm pulling out like these different emotional sets that these people are seeming to go through as they go through their purchasing process. So here's this ad, try it. And it like, it just crushed. <laughs> And so, I, yeah, from there, I was like, I have something weird here that like maybe we could use for other brands. And so from there, for the last year, that's all I've been doing is just refining my process for basically integrating consumer behavior into paid advertising, which has been super fun and very terrifying. Um, <clears throat> yeah. As you said, I think I have like 6,500 followers on Twitter, which is random. I'm just so weirded out. I'm like, that was on accident. I didn't think you guys would actually like follow me. That's weird. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Why like... are you over here? Yes. But I mean, when you, and this goes to show you, when you have something that works, when you have a good product, the marketing kind of does itself. If you solve a problem that's deeply rooted enough, then it markets itself, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, so now I run an agency with two other ladies, uh, Lauren from Laugh325 and Nicole, who used to work at Structured. And we're kind of building out basically an entire agency that solves this creative strategy problem where it is like, how do you target with creative instead of targeting in the platform? That's what we're solving. Yeah, and this, that's really neat. And that's, uh, you know, backing up your thesis of media buying is dying. You're not building out <laughs> a media buying agency. You're kind of, uh, we've talked about that you're much better and much more fun and prefer the, the creative. Yes, and that's creative more important it. as we keep going along anyway. So that makes a ton of sense. That's really neat. So uh, for the founders and the folks that are working with these bootstrap brands, mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, Sarah, Matt. Yeah. Creative is important. I get it. <laughs> I have this, I have this cool photo. I have this, this sick video, but like, 
what does it mean? Like, where do we start? Like, how do we start to like simplify this like psychology based creative for them? Yes, 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 yes. Implementation is one of the questions that I get asked the most. Like, cool, I got a lot of data or I have a lot of reviews or maybe I have none at all <laughs> if I'm a very, very new founder and I haven't done this before or we just haven't grown that fast this year. If you have nothing to go off of, like how do you implement creative strategy into the ads themselves so or, or consumer behavior into the ads themselves? One of the easiest ways to do this, I think, is to understand not just why people purchased, but what problem they're solving emotionally. And this is something that's very difficult, I think, for people to understand for themselves. So this is often why brands hire me to go do it just because it's easier to hire someone to take a look at this stuff than it is to kind of like spend hours doing it yourself. But overall, I would say for anybody that doesn't have reviews, read your competitors' reviews. Uh, <clears throat> although I hesitate sometimes to do that just because depending on the messaging your competitors are giving out, they could be bringing in a totally different person than you want to bring in. Mm. But if you have nothing to go off of, read, read, read the reviews. Second place I would go is to read anything on Reddit that pertains to your particular products and your like issue, the industry that you're in. Reddit people get very emotional. They're very serious about their stories in particular. And they will tell you from top to bottom, like, this is what I'm suffering from. <laughs> These are the specifics of everything that I'm going through. Like, what do you guys think I should do about this? And then it's like hundreds and hundreds of comments from people who are suffering from the same thing. One of the things we like to do is copy and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet and then go through and check frequencies of word usage. And I do this because language is one of the things that very few people actually sit and think about unless you're a copywriter. Copywriters have a lot of knowledge on language use. Um, very few people elsewhere in the industry have as much knowledge as copywriters. But in general, I think every creative person across the board on your team needs to have the same information. And language is one of the first places we go to build any sort of creative strategy because how your people are using their language talking about your product will change what they think about it. For instance, I was working with a brand a while ago that they had a consumer base that was coming back with two different words, two different subroots. One was using the word disgusting and the other one was using the word gross. And I noticed that like disgusting and gross are two totally different things. When you talk about gross, usually it's very like visceral, tactile, right? Like it's, you could touch it and it's nasty. Disgusting has more to do with like psychological abrasion. Like I don't like it psychologically and that's a totally different sentiment than like sticky gross. So because of this, we can use it in ads. I can actually go into an ad and use the word disgusting and test to see if that's the vertical we want to use. And if it is, I'm not going to stop there. Once you find a word out coming out of these comments and reviews that's coming up a lot, test the vertical first, the actual sentiment of it, and then test words that are similar to it. Easiest way to do that is to go to thesaurus.com and type in the word disgusting and see which ones match closest to the actual like sentiment that you're going for. I mean, there's like hacks on hacks, just like tons of different ways that yeah. I, can, I can show you to do sure. this. But overall, what we're trying to do is match emotional sentiment, not necessarily angles or like ideation, you know? Yeah. So first step is emotional sentiment. You're finding <laughs> yeah. these words, these how people are feeling, what their reaction is. Uh, Reddit, like you said, is a gold mine. Reddit, just yeah. Just reiterating <laughs> that. So you, you find, you found, like, just go with the example you shared, disgusting and gross. Mm -hmm. And so you found that word. It's, it's used a lot. Well, these two words are used a lot. You mentioned that they're kind of different words. And so when you talk about then using it in the ad, new ad creative, um, is it like, disgusting and you just put text over an image and say disgusting is disgusting. it the ad copy is like a headline that might actually work what? really well honestly <laughs> like, disgusting yes somebody so, test that ad for me yeah <clears throat> yeah what do, you, I, what do you mean by that like how do you use it then yeah so we've pulled out all these words that kind of match each other right they're kind of like synonyms a little bit but overall what we're trying to do is categorize emotions beneath the word disgusting why do they think it's disgusting that's my question my question is like someone who's really into like consumer behavior analysis would be why all the time, all day long. I'm just like, why? Why is that? Why are they doing that? Why are they saying that? Why do they feel that way? And the reason we're doing that is because there's always an emotional underlying feeling to everything we do. 95% of our like decision making skills come out of the subconscious itself. So they've done lots and lots of studies and neuroscience seem to agree across the board that we're only using about 5% of our brain to actually make like logical decisions. 
actually like, I'm choosing to make this decision. The rest of it, 95% of it is coming out of like, we don't even know why we made that decision. We just did. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> and this happens a lot. You know, I drove yeah. to Starbucks today and ordered um, a chai latte, which I didn't need. And I wasn't really craving. I just did it <laughs> because... And it's terrible. Like, I don't know why I'm purchasing this on like a continual basis. It's probably not very good for me. It's high in sugar. It tastes good. And that's about it. But the experience of it lasts, what, maybe five to seven minutes while I sit there and drink the whole thing and then it's gone. But I'm still continuing to purchase this coffee. Like, I don't know why. It's just, it's happening a lot. This is the same thing that happens with the platforms. And this is the reason why I try to reiterate the fact that if we're going to be doing any sort of paid advertising, if we're actually going to be spending money on ads... We need to make sure that the messages we are sending are targeted very, very specifically. And this is why we do categorizations for emotions. So internally, we use something called an NLP report. It's uh, natural language processing. Basically means that we're taking down a ton of these comments and reviews. And then we will sit there and by hand right now until I can actually find a developer that can build this for me. <clears throat> we'll go through and categorize every single comment into nine different emotional categories that were built off of just all of this psychology research that I did. So like Maslow's law and like a couple different other models. But in general, once we start categorizing them, we can notice the frequencies of emotions that are coming out, not just word frequency. Right. So it's not just disgusting on the yeah. end. Like, <laughs> like what, why are they saying disgusting? Yes. What, why? What's, the, what's, what's beneath that? So what's the layer below that? So exactly. then you yeah. take that and then mm -hmm. you figure out how to message, how to capture yes. a new photo, how to like, yes. What kind of new video is that kind of the next step or yeah. what comes after that yes. like emotional yes. kind of set? So a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> And without fail, I always start with statics. And there's a reason we do that because they're cheap. I like cheap. I don't like spending money. It stresses me out. So like I, I would so much rather start with something that's cheap to produce and cheap yes. to run. And I get a lot of pushback. People are always like, well, Sarah, like ah, statics aren't working for us right now. We can only get video to work or UGC to work. And I'm like, it's probably because your messaging on your statics is incorrect. It's not that they don't work. It's that, that the messaging hasn't worked. So like, let's right. tweak it. And this is the reason why the foundation of the research part is so important because we are testing emotional verticals, not necessarily angles. An angle would be like, I'm on keto, I'm doing intermittent fasting, I'm like, I have joint pain, I have IBS, like those type of things. The emotional foundation though, below all of those is, I really want to solve a problem. Like I have symptoms that I don't want. I want to reach a goal, symptom free. That's my goal, right? So that's the pillar that we want to build off of. So I will go in and generate a whole bunch of new ads that are based upon the like psychological emotion that's coming out the most. So in that particular instance, with all those people that are like, I am keto, I'm IBS, I'm intermittent fasting, whatever it is, they're all of them are trying to reach the goal of being symptom free, right? Or lose weight, those type of things, but it's still goal oriented. So we're going to test the messaging of achieve your goals, messaging over anything else. Message is so, so important. And the message comes out in a couple different places too. And this dives into like, creative design, which I think somebody needs to come up with like a paid creative design course. Maybe that's the next one we should do is paid creative design course. Because so. the, the way you design things is very important. And how you combine images and text is, is so vital to how your ads perform. Yeah. So higher, you're getting at the emotions are connected to something else. So yes. you have the disgusting, you have the emotional set, and then you have this goal. You mentioned the word yes. goal. And so yeah. from my basic understanding and looking at your site and your content, that's a, a higher order goal is a psychographic yes. marker. So that's yes. one of the things that they could be responding to mm -hmm. or like trying to solve. Mm -hmm. There's other, there's two other ones, uh, life events and emotional motivators. Yes. So you're saying you're testing the goal pillar first yeah. and then potentially once you have that figured out or we went through a few iterations of that. Ah, oh, the goal's really not working. Is that then you go to events, emotional motivators, or are those kind of all yes. connected? They're all connected. So in general, the entire system is always go through the research, figure out exactly what people are feeling emotionally, test the emotional pillars, and then go through and start testing more granular. So the emotional pillar is going to be much more broad based of like, this is what our consumers buy our product for is to solve a goal, right? But within that emotional motivator, here's all the problems that they're like, 
you know, having issues with, and we could test those one at a time. But I want to test specific emotional pillars first. So often when we do this research, we'll find that they want to achieve a goal, but they also really want to like nurture their families or they're really into like empowering themselves to feel something better. So there's multiple emotions that like mm -hmm. go into the product. And this is the reason why, like I said, creative strategy is tough. Like it's a tough industry to be in. Even for somebody that like figured out a framework pretty early on, it's hard because it just takes so much time. Like it just takes a lot of time and a lot of research, but doing it this way does a couple of things for us. Across the board for this entire year, I've been able to drop CPAs between 40 and 50% for every client that I've had because wow. of this framework. Um, and like I said, that's throughout all kinds of different industries. I mean, I've had brands that are doing supplements, brands that are selling shoes, brands that are doing, you know, dog collars, like across the board, we've been able to do this because we're testing emotional pillars, not necessarily angles. Right. So, so yeah. So the pillars are, <laughs> to, I want to reiterate a couple of things. <laughs> okay. 40 to 50% CPA drop, 40, folks. 40 to 50%. You yeah. can, the best so, I ever had was 49% drop in CPA. Wow. So that's so that's good. That's so good. So <laughs> what that means is you can spend the same amount of money you were doing before. Yeah. Say you were spending 10 grand a month on ads mm -hmm. and you were getting a 2.5 X ROAS. And then now with Sarah's framework and advice and strategy and <laughs> system, that's now you're at a 3.75 X return on the same amount of spend. Yep. And so you can either cool more profit per order. Or, hey, I can start scaling a bit more now. Exactly. And get Spend higher more money. revenue. <laughs> yes. Either way. So there's that's what, like, that's the outcome. Like, okay, Matt, Sarah, I know what credit is important. Like, this is why it's important. Like, this, this is, is a important. direct <laughs> direct impact on your top and or bottom yeah. line. Yes. So, 100%. Uh, so you have these pillars. And they're sometimes connected. And I think I was watching one of your videos. And you had an example that kind of had all three of them together about someone who was like uh, drinking beer or wanted to stop drinking beer because the stomach yeah. and feel better and health and family. So that's, that's kind of like where life event, emotional motivator and the goals kind of all squeeze in together. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Well, and that leads into, okay, cool. So I figured out the emotion and I figured out kind of like the frequencies of the words that they're using. How do I put that into an ad? How do I know which pillar to test first? And I, oh, this is the reason why frequencies are super important because, again, we're going through and categorizing every single comment so we can tell the sentiment of like achieving a goal is coming up the most. So that's the one we're going to test first, right? You have to be able to start somewhere. <laughs> Creative strategy is difficult because it really is like, what do we test first? How do we know what's going to work? Yada, yada, yada. And, and especially when it comes to like our ads are fatiguing, which is another topic for another time because fatigue <laughs> Just, that word drives me crazy in particular. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but when your ads just stop working, then what do we do? How do we know what to iterate on? How do we know what piece of this UGC is working? This is the problem that we're having with creative, as most people have no idea which piece is working. So we try and iterate on something that like, man, this ad is crushing. So we're just going to take it and take the hook out and like swap it with a different hook and then like change a few of the other pieces in it and then rerun it. And why didn't it work? I'm like, well, it's probably because you you basically mishmashed a whole bunch of emotions together that were, weren't going to work anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm so sorry, brands. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it is. Uh, and so, yeah, it's like what part of the ad was working? Oh, yeah. oh it could have been the person who was in the ad. It could have been yeah. the headline. It could yes. have been the text. It, yeah the hook, the, the middle part, like who knows? Like there's so many pieces of the puzzle. So yeah. it also could have the... been a combination of them, which is scary. So this yeah. is the reason why too, uh, when I say media buying is dead, I, again, I don't mean that like we don't need media buyers. We need talented people in that field. What I do want it to focus on is the fact that like we are coming up on a point in paid advertising where we no longer have control or at least like we no longer have the little control we thought we had. Cause again, Facebook told us there were three different parts of the funnel. There's no way of knowing whether that was true or not. Like they control the platform. We don't know where they were actually sending ads. All we had to go off of what was, is what was in the platforms. Now we know for sure that we have even less targeting than we used to have. So the only thing we can control is creative. Yeah, I get off, I, I get off my hard, I, I digress. A quick reminder from our sponsor, ShareID. 
Find your next lifetime customers by providing verified discount codes based on occupation or life stage. Speak directly to veterans, students, teachers, first responders, and continue to tailor your messaging to them in the future with post-purchase emails and text messages. Make them feel seen with your brand by using ShareID to seamlessly verify their email in seconds during the purchase process. Go to shareid.com slash Shopify and start your free trial today. No, 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 no. It's good. Uh, just reiterating that like you should keep listening. You should keep watching and uh, keep, keep learning. So you have all these emotions. You have these uh, different things to test out and try. But before we like start iterating and creating new stuff, and you said you already mentioned that we start with statics typically because they're, they're quicker, cheaper generally yeah. to produce mm -hmm. and iterate off of. How do you, what's that final step before you get to the new creative? It, it seems like you're kind of combining these different things. You're almost creating a new customer profile of sorts. So how do yeah. we like, how do we take what we've been doing and kind of put that together and then we'll get to the creative. Yes. So once we have the research done, then we'll create basically a customer profile where it's like, here is brand X's customer. These are the things they value. This is what they're going after in life. And here's the biggest emotional reasons they purchase from you in general, right? <clears throat> we'll also give a whole bunch of information on here's all of the terms that are frequently used. Here's the, here's the ones that are coming up most frequently. Here's the actual like angles that we can generate for just all of this, just from like reviews and comment research and, and Reddit really more than anywhere else. <clears throat> and then once we have all of that set down, then we can say, and, and we usually provide like an NLP report of this is your customer, the current one right? The ones that are currently commenting on your website, which is also very important because it's real-time data. We don't want to grab data from somebody who purchased five years ago. We really want somebody who purchased within the, at least within the last two years, but hopefully within the last six months so that we can continue to track the customer bases. Then once we have the profile, we'll go in and actually build the ads based upon those emotional pillars. And once we find one that's just like crushing, like this one is just hitting so incredibly well, then I will take the actual emotional motivator from that static and build it into a video, a UGC, a carousel. Like those are secondary, secondary creatives. Your primary creative should almost always be statics because they're cheap. <laughs> they're cheap to produce. They're cheap to run. Like let's start with testing our ideas on something that doesn't take us six hours and a bunch of back and forth with a creator to produce. Then we'll go to a creator and say, this particular emotional angle is working really, really well. Can you play this character? I usually don't go to my UGC creators and give them a script of like, this is exactly what I want you to say. Usually I'll go to them and sit down on like a Zoom call and say, this is what our customers are feeling. This is what they want to achieve. And this is the emotional base that we're trying to hit. Can you play this character? And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll ideate between the two of us usually instead of giving them like a brief because it just works better in the long run. <laughs> Right. And so, and the difference between uh, working with someone like yourself or using this psycho psycho uh, psychology based creative and this like, structure and system is rather than normally founders right now are just, oh, UGC is working. I need a creator. I'm going to hire you five. Yeah. And yeah. Here's the product and make me some stuff. <clears throat> and yep. it's like, or here's the script of what to say, which is arguably worse at times. <laughs> uh, or it's just, not they don't know your brand and product like you do yes and yeah. they, they don't have the research so you're helping bridge that gap you're mm -hmm. you're helping communicate with the creators you're helping communicate with the media buyers uh sometimes the founder is still the media buyer so <laughs> exactly yeah. uh, you're kind of you're kind of amplifying and helping everyone do their job better yeah <laughs> you're kind of the, yes. the glue in the middle yeah that everyone doesn't like it's kind of sticky it's kind of icky it's, it's like it's tough, but it's, it's so important to hold everything together. Yes. Yeah. We need someone in this particular space. This is something I notice a lot with brands that come and hire us is they constantly tell us, well, are you going to be producing ads? Are you going to help us like manage our UGC creators? Like, can you help us basically manage the team? And that's a part of our job now is like, yeah, I mean, we can absolutely be the go-between and you have to have someone here. I find this really interesting because we've been equated a lot to like marketing directors Lots of people. Well, I, what's the difference between a creative strategist and a marketing director? Isn't that what the marketing director is supposed to do is like manage the information to the team? And I always say, yes, absolutely. The difference is marketing directors are over everything. 
They're over all of the marketing for the entire brand, usually all of the email, all of the paid ads, also all of the offline, all of the community, like everything that you're building on brand side. Creative strategists are specifically for paid, just paid, nothing else but paid. That's all we do. <laughs> it's just that's paid. All, yeah. Yeah. That's all you guys do. And that's what yeah. they hire you for. Yeah. And so if you're a bootstrap, you, you, you're, you're, you know, you're wearing all the different hats and yeah. you're, you're supposed to be the marketing director yourself. Maybe you can start to take the, some of the learnings from uh, Sarah and her team or uh, when you're doing this research yourself yeah. and start to be like, oh, well, this ad is working great. This emotional concept I'm solving for in the ad. Oh, let's adjust the website to kind of update yes. that. Oh, Absolutely. I have a new campaign to send out <laughs> on my email next week. Let's kind of replicate that. So that's yes. what, how you can start to like get the most out of it and become a marketing director yourself because it's so important that it's so many different channels and you guys are just yeah. helping on the paid ad side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's where the research comes in. You can use it anywhere. All over your brand for, I mean, for customer service, you can use it down to emails. You can use it out for community research. You can use it for all kinds of things on the visual side too. As soon as we figure out that like your people want this particular emotional subgroup, then we can change out images. We can change out models. We can change out colors, those type of things to better match what the consumers want to hear and see and digest. Yeah. It's huge. Nice. Yeah. No, that's really good. And that's a really good you know, foundational baseline of how to yeah. kind of do this yourself or kind of uh, take care of it and do a basic understanding and be like, cool, Sarah, I'm going to hire you for, I'm like, can I just get a consulting hour? Like, this is what <laughs> yeah. I just did. Please like, do. I, this is my favorite part is like consulting yeah. just because some this isn't hard. Like I said, it's just time consuming is all it is. So if you don't have time to do it yourself, hire someone to do it. But if you would rather do it yourself, which I, I suggest all the founders do, especially if you're bootstrapped just because, one, it saves you money and time. But two, just because it's important for you to know your consumers and, like, your customers and what they are talking about and what they're doing, I would suggest everybody go through and do some research and just listen for a while. Yes. Yeah. Super no, important. That's, that's great. Um, so we had a I had a couple tweets that I, I've – looked back over the little last while from you and some of them got a lot of engagement and <laughs> hype over others. And so I wanted to kind of dive in a little bit more about that. Um, the first one up is not a trick question. Why does anyone <laughs> buy anything? <laughs> Only real answers go. And there was, I think 70 replies yeah, or more was a on, lot this, on, on this thing. <laughs> and so you got a wide range of answers. People said out of fear, to solve an emotional need, to try to get somewhere that they currently aren't at, um, because they feel a wide range of answers. So mm -hmm. what was your intent behind this question, besides mm -hmm. algo engagement bait? <laughs> and uh, what, what do you, like, why does anyone yeah. buy anything? Yeah. Yeah. So usually, this is really funny. This is the second time I've posted this tweet. Um, <clears throat> the first one got over a hundred comments the first time. And it was like, geez, people, this is a hot button topic for people. I had no idea this was going to be so exciting for people to comment on this one. So this is the second time I've ran it. And the, really the reason behind it is mostly because I like to engage in conversations that may get people to think about things. Cause I've noticed that marketers will get stuck in a rut where it's like, this is the way it's done. And this is the way we've always done it. And like, these are the <laughs> facts about customers. And I'm like, that's not how people like humans work. But okay, yeah, yep, we can go that direction. So usually I post this just to get people to think more than anything else. And I just like the conversation. So the interesting part about it, it's something we were talking about earlier too, was like the <laughs> marketers don't seem to agree on why people purchase, which I find really entertaining because I have, like I said, I have a lot of psychology knowledge and I have my own opinions on why people purchase things. Um, and we could talk all day long about how the brain works and how like, you know, decisions are made, those type of things. But overall, this is a very good example of the fact that people push their own biases into their jobs as marketers. And it's very scary sometimes yeah. um, because you carry this bias of like, well, I think that people purchase out of fear. Right. They're just they're trying to negate bad things happening in their life. You're going to pull that into your marketing, whether you're a media buyer, graphic designer, copywriter, founder, like 
you're going to pull your own biases into your brand. And that's why it's so important to pull yourself out sometimes of the actual community base itself and get plugged into some people who are not marketers. I think that's really, really important, especially if you can get a hold of some customers, that's even better because they'll tell you things that you've never even thought of before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You haven't even yeah. thought of before. Yeah. Um, there's this phrase and saying about it's hard to read the label of a jar from inside yeah. the lid yeah. or something. So yeah. it's like you're so too close to it. Yeah. And like hard to see the forest or the trees. That's another yeah. one. Like, yeah. Just, if you're in it, it's hard to see where you are. <laughs> you're the you're this brand founder. This is like your baby. Like you're yeah. thinking about this all the time. You want this to work. You're growing it. You're putting all of your time and money and energy mm -hmm. into it, and you get so like attached to it. But in the in the in a personal way, you get biased rather than yeah. what's the best thing for the customer. Why are yeah. customers liking this and buying mm -hmm. this particular product for me? Like, yeah. oh, I would want to buy this because it solves this problem for me. Yeah. But that may not be the problem it's solving for them. The customer, yeah. And that goes into economics and like learning all about how global markets work, and, the, and the, which is super interesting to me. Um, some people might find it super boring, but I, I find it really interesting. Mostly because where the consumers sit nowadays, who you're actually marketing to, the generation that they came from and how they were parented all come into play when they purchase stuff from you. If you're marketing to Gen Z right now, whoa. You, you've got your work cut out for you because they expect a lot. That generation in particular has high, high expectations for the brands that they interact with, which is very different compared to like a boomer. Boomers have very different expectations too, but their expectations lie mostly with on the functionality of the brands that they work with. Like, how can you solve my problem and quickly type of a thing? Gen Z very much is like, how can you entertain me first? And then solve my problem. <laughs> we want to be entertained. We want to be heard. Like Gen Z is very much into that. So again, I th this tweet really is always born out of like, what do the marketers think right now? And where do their biases lie? Because they change. The first tweet I actually did, I should post this. I did an analysis of all the answers. And of course, because I'm weird, came up with the frequencies. <laughs> And the majority of the people, uh, and I, I think I ran that in the spring, the majority of the people said, well, people do it so that they can, you know, better their lives and like have better outcomes for things and they want to enjoy things. And now that we're into Q4, all the marketers are like, they're trying real hard not to like have bad things happen. To <laughs> totally different sentiment between the two. Yeah. I need to post that. I'm going to, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go post the results from those two. Cause yeah, it was should. weird. It's like marketers, you had like a totally different answer in the spring. Ah, oh, so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, like you're saying, uh, it could be tied to, related to the markets where it, like yeah. the sentiment of, you know, how people are feeling. It's the election kind of, uh, midterm yes. election just happened. Oh, where yeah. in this recession that they don't want to call a recession with <laughs> all this like <laughs> stuff is happening. There's yeah. still a war going on in part of the world. Like it's, uh, yeah. there's a lot happening and yeah. this things, these things change. So. Mm -hmm. So that was a really good tweet. Uh, oh, that, and I'm glad you did that. And I'm, I hope you do the the comparison between the two. I need to. Yes, I'll go do that be, sometime. Probably next week, I'll post it and be like, "That'd be great. at be you, Miss Matt. Look at these funny results." <laughs> Please, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're gonna start uh, our descent on the proverbial uh, podcast plane and start going in for a landing. We have another tweet here that was pretty. I thought it was pretty good uh and something i'm trying to keep in mind as a one-man marketing team for the yes. subtown mattress now 100%. Is, is a solid paid creative strategy is built from the following disciplines and there's 10 so mm -hmm. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna list them off real quick alignment research avatars ideation briefing content production launch creative analysis <laughs> iterations organization Yep. And strategy without a system is just a goal. So these 10 things kind of add up in this order yep. is a system for creative. So how do we start building the system? <laughs> what components and inputs can we either gather from what we already have, or if I'm starting from, I'm starting from almost scratch. Like yeah. there was no like real there's no real full-time in person before me yeah, for yeah. this brand. So I'm just like, what do I do, Sarah? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do I start to get this alignment and research and all this stuff in order? 
Well, I mean, this brand in particular is is very lucky to have you because you have a large amount of paid background. So that's a huge piece of it is like they definitely chose the right person with choosing Matt. So like shameless plug over here for Matt. But oh. <clears throat> in general, I would say that you have to start with at least some paid background. If you don't have any background in paid, find someone who does and sit down and just say, can you teach me how you do what you do? Now, granted, the entire, like we've been talking about for forever, the entire platforms have changed, but you have to have at least some semblance of how the platforms work, how ads get run, how spend gets pushed type of a thing. Then we can go into this entire strategy system. So obviously there's 10 different things, but you can bucket them together pretty well. Alignment and research and avatars, that's all consumer research. So when you go through and do this, this like strategy system that we have on the internal side of the agency, we're talking more about like alignment of what are your KPIs? What are your goals? Where do you want to go this month? Do you want to push spend? Do you want to decrease spend? Like, where are we trying to get to this month? That's alignment. Research obviously goes down into who are the consumers? How are they using the language? We do the NLP report. We do consumer like research reports. We also do like competitor analysis. And then you can build your customer profiles off of that. Those first ones, alignment research avatars, I suggest you do at least once a quarter because the consumers change every single quarter, <laughs> uh, as we talked about. Yeah, From there, though, sorry, quickly, go ahead. Quickly, just adding in, and I know there's a bunch more you want to talk about, is <laughs> you, could have, you could have launched a new product. You could have changed the offer. You could have had a bundle. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. so many different things that happen. Like, oh, I just yeah. want to buy one. Now you're forcing the subscription on me. <laughs> like, so yeah. there's, that's why Sarah's like, do it often and keep yes, it updated. Do it yes. often. Because again, how your consumers use your product comes into play when it comes to purchasing. If you have a subscription service for a supplement that has three months of like actual product and your consumer use one month and they see good results, great. They wrote you a good review and then they stopped using the product after that first month. You have an LTV issue because now they have two bottles at home they haven't used yet and they don't need to purchase from you again type of a thing. You have got to build your product and your brand around how people use things, not necessarily how you think they should use things. Super important. <laughs> yes. Super, super important. But that comes, again, that comes out of research. Let's find out what, why, and how. After that, then you can go into the actual paid strategy part, which is ideation of any sort of ads, briefing if you need to actually pull in creators, and then producing and launching the actual creative itself. This part, almost everybody already has because they have a media buyer or they have UGC creators. Like they have people in place to do this part. So often we don't have to be involved in this. Uh, it's the research and the next part that's going to be like pretty important. So once you have all of your ads created based upon the research and your avatars, your actual like consumer profiles, then you can go into let's analyze the creatives, do iterations and organize the actual system for creating more. There must be a system in place. We can't just like, that one looks good and then <laughs> randomly iterate from it. Like there yeah. has to be a system for iterations and that comes down to being organized. What are your naming conventions? How are you organizing your assets? Where do they live? What folders are they in? Those type of things. The better of a system you can create, the faster you can move. Very important. Smooth as fast, fast as smoother, whatever yep. that saying is. So <laughs> yes. you have these good buckets going. Yep. Consumer mm -hmm. research for the first three, paid ads for the next four, mm -hmm. and then analysis, iterations, organization for the last bucket. Yep. Uh, I didn't catch a bucket if you had a name for that last group. That just iterations, yeah. like yeah. ongoing. Yeah. Like that last part is, yeah. is really for performance. It's Got basically it. just performance iterations. Because, um, it. It, yeah, it has a lot to do with, like, how – how you're actually performing and where you're going. And again, just to reiterate 50 more times, this is all going to be tied at what the consumers are doing right now. You may come in and build some really fantastic ads that worked last week and don't work this week. And you're going to be like, what the heck happened? And then we take a look and notice that like, oh, it's past Black Friday. Well, no duh, they're not converting. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody's your, done shopping. <laughs> your, your Black Friday <laughs> offer is still, like yes. the messaging is still the main focus. Yep. You still have like, Sale extended, but it's not actually extended yes. like anymore. So yeah, the, you, it's yeah. not just you can't just look at the numbers. You have to yep. know like what the yeah. numbers are telling you. Yep, pull so. out of the platform a little bit, people, <laughs> and go yes. into what are my consumers doing right now? Because again, right after Black Friday, you know what people are going to do? They're going to slow down shopping as, until they get into December, and then they're going to start to pick up a little bit more. But the majority of them have already completed their holiday shopping. So like by the time you hit mid December, you're basically too late. 
Yes. Yeah. Oftentimes uh, for gifting and buying for other people and depending yeah. on your brand and product, you could go for the more selfish angle. Yes. You go, ah, you got gifts for everyone else now. Yes. But Get a gift for yourself. yourself. Get a gift yes. for yourself. Yeah. 100%. And again, Christmas is not the time to be thinking about Christmas. I, I feel bad for most people, but like that holiday is for like retail shopping mostly. Christmas is very, very low on the like online store kind of a front. You should be focusing on New Year, New You, January in particular. It doesn't matter what product you have. New Year, New You is January based, especially if you're in health. But even if you're not, like even if you sell shoes, man, it's a new year. It's a new you. You deserve a new pair of shoes. <laughs> like focus on what the consumers are already expecting. That's the important part. And that's tailoring the message. And you can do that like on the fly. Yes. Uh, you can do it yourself exactly. in the afternoon. You're not, it's not, we're not beholden to the past few decades of, yes. all right, here's our campaign. Here's the message. We bought this billboard for 12 weeks. <laughs> yes. We get one, one shot at it. Like yep. you get to do that at scale on your yeah. own. And you're on a little phone. Yes. Like, you're not, as it's not many a, it's times not a as you want. Yes. yes. So. Oh, hundred percent. This is the greatest day and age ever to be an advertiser or a brand. So I know I bring all this information of like, Jesus, Sarah, that's a lot. Like now I'm terrified, but we need to understand that like, this is a strategy that's going to help you move faster, but that doesn't mean that you have to use this one. It also doesn't mean that like what you're doing now is not working. You know, you just, you have so much opportunity, so many different platforms to choose from. And the consumers are already over there. Like gone are the days when we're just waiting for a car to drive by that hopefully had a consumer that might see our billboard and want to like, you know, interact with us. Now we can actually set set up things right in front of what they're already on. So like, don't, don't like, don't take this as a bad thing. <laughs> no, we're, we're, no, this is a great time to be a marketer and a brand for sure. Yeah. And there's, there's no minimum ad, like sure yeah. there's suggested minimum ad spend for mm -hmm. getting results back in a certain amount of time and be able to get st statistical significance on stuff. Yeah. Sure. But you can literally start as low as five, 10, yes. 15, $20 a so day. Oh, cheap. You cannot do that with a billboard, a no. TV ad. Nope. Uh, you cannot do that radio. Yeah. No. If you so. don't have any money for ads, you can get on TikTok and start producing organic and crush it yes. without having any sort of paid advertising budget. There's oh, so much opportunity. So There's much, so yeah. much opportunity. Sarah did a great job laying out the foundational stuff, the, the structure, the Thank frameworks, you. the why, the hows. Uh, I was taking notes and adjusting <laughs> some stuff. And once I get the new Shopify site up, hopefully this week, fingers, yes! crossed, fingers crossed, I can then finally uh, get a little deeper into this because yes! I've just been having our old ads like kind of running, doing some minor adjustments, but mm -hmm. I wanted to get that structure and organization and this framework, like flow yeah. set up. So this is really helpful for me. So uh, Good, I really so appreciate bad. it. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, last, last thing is just, if there's anything that we didn't go over, if you, something on your mind besides media buying is dying uh, <laughs> that you wanted to mention, uh, if not, we can just uh, close it out. Yeah. I Well, and the one thing I want to mention that I, I've been hearing a lot of marketers say recently in particular is that like we're starting to get to the point where people don't know which way to go. Like, I don't know how to do this. Like, we don't know how to do our ads. We don't know creative strategy. We don't know how to build creative that converts. And my plug to you guys would be, don't stop learning. That's going to be huge for the brands moving forward. Because I think a lot of people are not quite prepared for what we're going to be required to do in 2023 to be able to keep up. And the only way that we can do that is to continue to learn. Twitter is one of the best places to go if you just want to learn from people who are just sharing information all day long. But outside of that, like I would hope you guys would get plugged into a good group. Matt has like fantastic stuff going on over here. He's teaching a lot of really good things. He also has like a ton of really great people on who are just smart. So like if you're a brand founder, you're bootstrapped, you're doing this all on your own. Best place to go is to get connected to people like Matt and to people on Twitter and just keep learning because that's how we grow. So. That was a not a not sponsored shout out. I did not pay. <laughs> you did not to say know that. I was gonna do this. I did not know that. That's very kind. I really appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot. So I agree. Keep learning. Keep keep learning. It, yep. It's this stuff keeps changing. There's gonna be a new platform in the next year or two. Yes. I'm sure. Yep. And that's Coming. like TikTok that made everyone evolve and adjust and mm -hmm. adapt. So yes. keep learning. So Sarah, where the heck do you want to point people to if they want to talk to you, ask you questions, hire you guys, plug yes. your life. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, so I am over on Twitter basically 24-7. If you want to follow me, it's at Sarah Levenger, L-E-V-I-N-G-E-R. And then if you want to hire us to come in and do like any sort of consult, we also like, we do the one-on-one consulting, but we also have like a full system if you guys want to just hire us to basically build out a creative strategy framework in your brand. Uh, you can go visit us at hgperformancecreative.com. And yeah, that's where you can figure out, find out more information. So awesome. Go, go check out Sarah, go follow her, go hire her, do all that <laughs> cool stuff. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank and, you. Uh, everyone listening. Thanks so much again for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. That's it for today. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I love being able to do this, continue to learn and meet people in this industry. Every rating, review, and episode you share with a friend means so much to me as I'm bootstrapping this show as part of my media brand, High Key Geek. If you haven't checked out my other show, Brand Builders, you should. It's with myself and Tom Brown and Richie Mashiko. Two times a week, we talk in a much more casual setting, and we think out loud, we brainstorm, and we share our lessons as we continue to operate and run businesses in the D2C space today. We're not we didn't exit. We didn't just consult and advise now. And we don't, we're in the trenches as we, like every day still. So we're learning in real time and sharing it with you as we go. That's Brand Builders on High Key Geek YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you find your podcasts. Catch you next time.